In a totally unprecedented move, we're about to start a three video series in which you and I are both aware that it is happening. And so you might be asking yourself, what am I knowledgeable enough in that I could take on such an ambitious project? And obviously, if you're asking that question, you don't know me particularly well, because I'm going to talk about something that I am unqualified and unprepared to really do justice. So without further ado, the next three videos are going to be all about art. But why art? But why male models? The short answer is I've been watching a lot of videos by artists lately. And while not a particularly great answer, it has been a rather sudden fascination of mine. And I want to give a shout out to the artist who definitely spurred me in that direction. His name is Andrew Price. He goes by Blender Guru on YouTube. And he puts out a whole bunch of content but specifically, he's made some really incredible tutorials and talks a bit about the philosophy of art, which I've found particularly fascinating. But obviously, this wouldn't be much of a video if the reason that I was creating a video about the philosophy of art, or I guess three videos about the philosophy of art, was simply because I had watched some YouTube videos and it kind of tickled my fancy. And I do think that there is a longer, deeper answer. And that answer is that I think I have art issues. But before we delve into my art issues, I think it's worth giving a definition of art. Because anytime I'm starting something like this, I like to kind of go back to basics. Google defines art as the expression or application of human creative skill or imagination. And what struck me as so interesting about that definition is just how low the bar gets set. So low, in fact, that Picasso's self-portrait and a pile of mashed potatoes with a face drawn in it both get to share the company of calling themselves art. And I think that that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about and have been thinking a lot about is the fact that art is sometimes put on a pedestal. There's a tendency to be snobbish about art. But the reality is, is that I think that that's a affectation of the way that we perceive art and not fundamental to art itself. What really got me thinking about this is actually something that I said in my last video. Rather offhandedly, I said that the world doesn't need any more self-portraits from art students. And I said that in the context of wanting to imply that the act of learning is good, but the end result is not needed. And what at the moment I didn't realize, but has been kind of eating away at me all week, is the idea of needed. To be more specific, the idea of needed is and comes from a place of judgment. The idea that something that is unneeded is somehow worse. And it led me to a much heavier question, which is, is any art needed? And so then, in thinking about it, I kind of drew a continuum and said, okay, certain art like Picasso's self-portrait is over here, and I think that maybe we would classify it as needed. And then over here, we have the mashed potatoes with the face drawn in it, where drawing the face in the mashed potatoes honestly just devalued the value of the mashed potatoes before that. And if I imagine these two on a continuum, then there has to be some point in the middle to the right of which are needed art, and to the left of which is the rest. And what that brought me to is that that continuum should really not be needed so much as valuable. And I think that that's one of the things that I've been struggling with, is anyone in this world who creates anything wants to see value in that creation. 
right? And I've been very focused on the process, and I've been kind of shrugging off the value question when it comes to what I am doing here, that I hesitate because of the mystique and the putting art on a pedestal to even classify as art. But if we go back to the definition, there is no question that this is an application of human creativity. So in a way, that definition has kind of freed me to refer to this as art, although it still gives me the willies a little bit. So when I started to move away from need and towards value, I started to think about frameworks that I could use to evaluate value. Right? Because we want to feel that the work that we are doing and the things that we are creating have value. And this is where my mind kind of went off at a 45 degree angle and you know flew off into the ether. But bear with me and hopefully this will make sense. In the world of evaluating morality, there are two different ways to evaluate the ethicalness of an action. One is called deontology, and it is essentially the idea that actions themselves have inherent moral worth. And the other is teleology, that essentially says that an action's value is determined by the consequences of that action. And with all good ethical hypotheticals, we go to cannibalism to illustrate it. The way that I learned these two theories was in the context of a group of people who were stuck in a lifeboat and had run out of food. They basically had two options. One option was to not resort to cannibalism, and they might all starve to death. And the other was to resort to cannibalism, and maybe some of them survive by eating one of their boatmates. Morbid to say the least. But the idea is that in deontology, you would say you can't eat one person because five minutes after you eat them, a ship might show up to rescue you. And in the world of teleology, you say greatest good for the greatest number of people, and you say that it is a morally justified action to eat one of the people if the other, say, five people survive. So how does this tie back to art? <laughs> well, if we remove the moral value and just talk about value, I think that what I have been wrestling with is an attempt to be deontological in my thinking and value the creation of art as innately having value. While in reality, I think that I have often had hints of teleology dancing in my head saying the value of the process of creating a video is only as great as the video that's created. And so I think that this kind of split between innate value and consequentialism is really interesting. And so I want to talk more about both halves of that. And so that's what I'm going to do in the next video. So cliffhanger alert. But in the next video, I want to talk teleologically about the value of works of art. I think there's a lot going on in the world, specifically right now, that makes questions of the value of art particularly interesting to ponder. And then in the video after that, I want to talk about essentially the deontological perspective of what if the value of art is innate in the creation of art. And specifically with the directions that our society is going, could that be incredibly important to the future of the way that humanity thinks of worthiness. But that's a bit of a spoiler alert. For now, that's the end of what we have to talk about here. And I'll catch you in the next one to talk about the value of art. So as always, thank you for tuning in. Uh, look forward to seeing you hopefully in the next three videos and have a great rest of your day. Bye. Not a potamus, ponderous.